What's up, guys? Today is the first time I'm back in the gym after two plus weeks of not working out. I had a dental op like two and a half weeks ago, or about three weeks ago. Oh, yeah, a little over three weeks ago, and got four of my wisdom teeth taken out. All four. I actually have like a remnant in this particular jaw because they didn't want to take everything out in order to not damage the nerve for this particular tooth but everything else sticking out i'll leave some clips here just so you guys can see me in pain agony and anguish when i was taking it out after i took it out but yeah first time back in the gym and the crazy thing is now i'm, I'm on a pto this month for the rest of this month and i still wake up at the same time that i normally wake up when i'm working which is kind of crazy i was like Okay, I'm gonna get more sleep, probably wake up at like midday or like after midday, but I'm sleeping at like 1, 2 a.m. And I'm still waking up at like 8 a.m., which is kind of crazy because I'm like, bro, I'm trying to sleep more. My body just like naturally wakes up and I can't go back to sleep. So I'm just gonna go hit the gym. Today's gonna be chest day. I haven't done chest in a while. I'll be doing push ups though, but gonna hit chest and yeah, let's get to it. By the way, just in case you didn't notice, I am working another Cyberwalks t-shirt sample i know i've been teasing these different samples on different videos so this is another sample this one was supposed to be a regular t-shirt but it just turned out to be tighter i also didn't like how it fit on the neck see how all these like you know loose you know things up here so it's a bit tighter as well so i decided just like this is just my personal sample i probably wouldn't see the light of day so i just turned it into a gym shirt you know it just fits a bit tighter on the arms and everything on the shoulders you know biceps and everything so it looks good that way i also this is i believe a small i also have this in the medium but i'm just gonna keep it for myself but as you guys have seen i've been teasing some samples the shop is in progress so you should be getting some really cool cyberworks merch soon purchase and yeah support the mission and everything and y'all i've got crazy designs coming soon like i'm gonna completely change the whole like fashion scene like in cyber security like i'm done and tired of all these tacky t-shirts that people wear all the time so i'm gonna give you guys something new so stay tuned for that all right let me go get this workout done it's been a bit of a productive day i'm actually just finishing up some studying I'm trying to finish up the certified cyber defenders course i'm finishing up this threat hunter module and it's been pretty fun so far it uses cabana and I haven't used Cabana in a long time since like I my days of like playing around with Security Onion, which is like years ago. I've you know I worked with Splunk at my last job. And currently since I work at Datadog, I mainly focus on our you know on our cloud sim and our logs pla platform. So I haven't really played around with any other sort of like log login tool or any sort of sim tool or analytics tool. So it's pretty much a really nice refresher after like almost two years or three years of actually not touching cabana like since like my days of security onion but yeah like it's been pretty cool so far i think at first it required a bit of ramp up for me because i'm not as familiar with like the elk stack at least at least of recently since i've not really used it but i think the moment that it clicked everything started making sense because i've already been i work a lot with like login tools and login platforms like especially at datadog i do a lot of stuff with like login both like you know backend stuff like data normalization pipeline stuff. So I, I'm very, very much involved. A lot of login and data analysis 
So I think the moment that I figured out some things, everything clicked and the rest was history. And I think that goes to show the thing with skills and cybersecurity in the sense that you don't really necessarily know, need to know how to use a tool. If you have the knowledge of how the concept works in this case, which is logging and analytics and querying and statistics, it's easy to carry that information and knowledge over to any other tool, which is why like these days when I talk to people who want to become cybersecurity analysts and they're like, oh, what tool should I learn? Should I learn Splunk? Should I learn Log with them? A curator or whatever the case is. I'm like, you know that even if you learn how to use Wireshark to query and find information within the packets or the packet capture you're looking for, or even if you're using TCP, TCP dump, the knowledge transfers to if you're going to be using Splunk or Kibana or Datadog or Jupyter Notebooks, it's the same concept of querying that carries over. So you don't necessarily have to learn a specific tool, but if you learn the skill of data analysis, of statistics, of you know data, data visualization, all of these things, it's easy to carry that knowledge over to another tool because that way you're sort of tool agnostic, but you have the base knowledge. And I was, I was talking about this more in a upcoming podcast I'm going to be doing with my mentor where we'll actually have this conversation because it's something that I actually picked up from him in terms of like learning skills and not tools, especially if you want to have longevity in your cybersecurity career. So just a little bit of a gem of a nugget there. But yeah, finishing this up, I'm actually enjoying it. Right now, I'm actually moving to the endpoint threat hunting module, which I think would be pretty cool. Probably doing like some threat hunting for like Windows systems or Linux systems, whatever the case is. I think it'd be really cool to dig deep into it and see like what this content is about. But yeah, I'm excited to finish this course up and do the exam. I think it's going to be really, really fun. Really great material so far. If you want to see my review on, of this, my initial impression of it, I'll leave a link to the video either in the description or somewhere on the screen. I did an initial review of it. I will be doing a, a post review once I'm done with it to let you guys know like my entire experience with it. But that's that so far. You probably are watching this video because you saw the title. I recently got promoted at Datadog and I wanted to kind of talk through some things I've been thinking about recently. So as you guys know, I've been doing this series about my journey to becoming a staff security engineer over the next nine years for context i'm 21 right now and my goal is to become a staff security engineer by the time i am 30 which is in the next nine years so i'm sort of like critically this journey as i'm approaching different things learning different things and how, how i want to sort of get to that goal i know like there's different variables but i do think it's an achievable goal right by the way i'm just trying to like flex this merch a little bit but I recently got promoted. So I got promoted from Detection Engineer 1 to Detection Engineer 2. If you're not familiar with what I do, I am a Detection Engineer at Datadog, which is a observability and security company. I basically work building detection mechanisms or technologies for customers. I primarily work on our cloud sim, which basically does detection for AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, SaaS platforms. So basically anything we have the ability to do login for and to integrate with, I am responsible for building detections for. So like recently I built detections for 1Password, for Cloudflare, for like Vault, for you know, anything really that we have the ability to log, whatever the case is. So that's what I'm responsible for. So that also involves like some threat research, you know, some you know, security analysis, some recently been doing a little bit more of like getting into like response, incident response automation, like various things. So I'm really focused on like the whole detection engineering piece, right, and my current role. And I've been a detection engineer one for like a year and six months, and I recently got promoted to detection engineer two. And also for context, just in case you're not familiar with this whole series of my career, and me as a person, um, I've been in the security industry for barely three years now. So I've been working full-time for close to two years, sorry, over two years now, and I've been working, I initially worked as an intern for about six months. So I have about two years and, oh, actually that's crazy. I have two years and 11 months of uh, security experience overall with about six months of that being internship. So by next month, I'm actually gonna be exactly three years of working in cybersecurity with about six months of that being internship. I know I'm repeating myself, I'm trying to like clarify the numbers, just for context for anyone who is not familiar with myself, my career, my journey, and you know, what I do. In regards to how I feel about like getting promoted, I think it was something that I had been sort of working towards and like kind of like, you know, trying to get to for like, I would say like maybe close to a year. I think the first time I actually had a conversation about it with the manager was in November of last year about like, how do I progress towards like, you know, going to the next level? And I think that was probably the first step to like going towards the next stage, like your promotion or whatever. I think it, it starts from actually having a conversation with your leaders and letting them know like, you know, this is what I'm working towards. And I think that sort of helps them guide you. So I had a conversation with my manager, with my director and with my mentor as well. From that moment on, it was basically about, okay, like this is the feedback that you need in order to get to that level, right? At the time I was at, 
I was having this conversation, you know, as a detection engineer one, I was operating at that detection engineer one level. So basically just like doing these everyday tasks, you know, of course, like I'm holding my own weight, but in order for you to actually get promoted to the next level, don't quote me on this, but I believe you have to have been working at the capacity of that level for at least six months, right? So you're, you're not gonna just get promoted to the next level without actually showing that you were able to work at that level because they don't wanna put you in a role where you're gonna start feeling a lot of pressure because you, you just didn't really, you just weren't ready for it. So in order for you to get to that next level, you have to start like showing that you are ready for it like f within a six month time frame or six months to a year, whatever the case is. This really helped me like, sort of like get into the flow of things. I think like really having that conversation and starting to like apply the feedback um, that I was getting from like my, my leaders and you know, learning things from my mentor as well, really helped me kind of like grow into it. Because initially when I first started at Datadog, like I had a lot of struggles because it's my it is my first engineering role and I had to sort of learn so many things that I wasn't familiar with. I sort of get used to, and I'm still learning a lot of things. I'm still a very new engineer. So there's a lot of things I have to learn, but I think at that point when I started really applying the feedback I was getting from my leadership and you know my peers and everything, I think I was really when things started to click better and sort of helped me get to the next stage. Like I started being a lot more able to take on certain responsibilities on my own, you know, build relationship with like the people from different teams. I think the major thing for me that I struggled with, which I still kind of struggle with, was like jumping into things I'm not familiar with. So like there's a lot of ambiguity with my job because like today I might be doing detection for like AWS or Google Cloud. And then next thing I know, I have to start building detections for like stuff like one password. I've never done detection engineering for password manager. So like it, it it's completely new to me. So you have to sort of like adapt to that evolving landscape of like new technologies, new SaaS platforms, new threats every day. So it's just a lot of things that it, like, you know, there's just like, you have to figure out on your own. And I think I used to be scared to jump into things because I just didn't know what to do. So like I would typically be helpless or not even, like it would take me a lot of, it, I had a lot of friction when it, in regards to jumping into new things. And I think I got that feedback from like, you know, my peer review and from like, from, you know, a bunch of other things that it made me actually like start to come to terms with it. Like it's not just something that was about like my role, but also in, in general as well. Like I like trying new things, but it takes me a bit of friction to jump into them. And I think over the last couple of months, that was something I was able to overcome. I'm not saying like that was what really made me get promoted, but I think like just that feedback alone was one of the things that really helped me get a lot more comfortable with trying new things, you know, like just getting into the weed of things that I'm not familiar with, like taking risks, quote unquote. Um, I think that really helped me a lot. And a lot of other things, I think also just really like focusing a lot more on my job so in the past i've typically always been focused on like you know learn the skill learn that skill taking certification all that i took some time off to like when i when i finished with school to really just focus on work like the last couple of months i've really just been focused on like work learning you know everything better like all of our systems you know all of our processes all of those things like instead of trying to focus on like this certification or that certification i think there's also room for like getting better at your job which is what i'm really focused on right now and like i said in my last video maximizing like that space you're in because like if you're always chasing the next thing like you're missing so much in like the space that you're in this is me just like musing on some of my learnings over the last couple of months on like you know before i got promoted and i think i'm kind of missing the point of what i'm trying to say about getting promoted but yeah those are some things that happened i would also say that when the promotion came it felt a kind of way in the sense that it's like okay like i've been working for this you know i've been trying to get to this point i've actually been aspiring to get to this point and it finally came and like for the first like two, three days, I think today's the third day after I got promoted, I still didn't really know how to feel about it, which kind of boils back down to my initial video when I talked about getting to a certain point and not knowing, thinking about like, was it, was all of it worth it? You know what I mean? Like when I was in that video, I'll put a clip here. And like when I was saying something along the lines of imagine I get to this level of staff engineer and I'm like, like, what if, what's, what, like, what, what if there's really no point in that, right? What if, what if I could just like, you know, just keep doing everything I'm doing, like, you know, making content at the same pace I am. What if content blows up? What if I become like a big YouTuber or something? You know, just kidding. But yeah, so I'm, I, th I think I'm at the point where I don't know if I'm distracted or I don't know if I just need to figure out what is important. Like, is being, is becoming a staff engineer important enough as to where I have to give everything up to get there at the pace and at within the time frame I want to get there versus could I just like keep doing everything else I'm doing? Because like, there's also the compound effect of everything else I'm doing, right? Whether it's content, whether it's like community, whether it's like making courses, there's that compound effect that would eventually yield results. 
even in that time frame. Oh, was it a little bit worth it? I think I had a moment of that, like when I got the news about getting promoted. But after I started thinking more about it, and even now I'm talking about it, like I, it changed my mind a lot of things. I realized that it was a really good growth process that I've learned a lot from. And I actually did enjoy the process of that growth. And looking back now, I actually appreciate that I went through the different stages of growth that I went through, because if I didn't, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Like as an engineer in general, not even like with the promotion. Like if I didn't go through those things that I had to learn and like sort of get better at or like recondition my mind to, in terms of being a better engineer, aside from the pro uh, from the promotion, I would be sort of stagnant. So I, I think like the promotion was maybe just like a sort of like validation of those things, just the way like a certification is the validation of your knowledge. So now like um, I feel better more than ever about my goal of becoming a staff security engineer because of how I'm thinking about this production and uh, this promotion and you know how it happened and everything. I think that it's going to be a journey that's very much worth it. I think that learning to enjoy the process and you know sort of finding balance with everything is going to be a learning process. And I think I've looked back at these last couple of months, like six, seven, eight months. As a matter of fact, this last one year and seven months, I think I've been a data dog. I feel better than ever about my career goals and where I'm going. And I'm super excited for it, as a matter of fact. And I think that I have a lot to learn. And I think I'm realizing that now more. I've always known that, but I'm realizing that more now. And I'm actually enjoying like the process of learning these things, getting better, and just really overall improve, improving as an engineer. Um, and just like as a, as a human being in general. So yeah, like I think this was like really, the, the promotion was really enlightening, especially in this season where I'm at right now, thinking about a lot of things. And I think that right now, I'm not even focused on like, you know, how do I become a senior engineer or anything. What I'm really focused on, like I said in my last video right now is just maximizing where I'm at right now, maximizing like my skills. As the engineer I'm at right now, like getting better at certain things. Like I'm not chasing like the next title, I'm chasing like, how do I get better at what I already do? How do I make, you know, my, my how do I improve my skills for where I'm at so that I really just like function seamlessly, like smoothly, right? At the engineering level that I'm, I'm at. And whenever I'm ready to become a senior, take on those responsibilities, take on those tasks and take on that title, I feel way better about it. And I'm, I'm looking back again, just when I'm looking back now at you know the years or amount of time I spent as a, as a detection engineer two or engineer two or mid-level engineer, appreciating the learning experience and everything that I went through before going to senior. So yeah, that's how I feel about it. Super excited to like just continue like what I've been doing and just like learning a lot more, you know, just really getting deeper into the work I do as an engineer and super excited for it. But yeah, that's it. That's for this video I'm gonna get back to work now but thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for following my journey if you like this video be sure to hit that like button subscribe if you're not subscribed um, check out my other videos as well and yeah definitely check out the links in the description for various resources also don't forget to check out my new LinkedIn learning course on AWS threat detection also linked in the description below and tell me what you think about it and uh yeah thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye bye